Is it NumPy or NumPy? This is a debate I started over the internet, not even intentionally. How to pronounce the NumPy NumPy Python library package. And the reason this all started was I was sharing in a little clip on social media about what I learned in my recent machine learning class, which included the NumPy, we'll go with that, the NumPy uh, library used for Python. Anyways, leave down in the comments, how do you pronounce it? And what, what do you think is the right way? In this video, we are not going to be debating fully on what, how to pronounce NumPy or NumPy, but rather I wanna share with you exactly what I've been learning in my machine learning course. Now this is a course that, or a program that is a year long, I'm taking at George Brown College. And the first course of the entire program is machine learning one. So we are starting from the foundation of machine learning and building our way up. This course is a mixture of hands-on work and then also to business theoretical work. So I really love it. As a side note, I got some comments being like, Tiff, are you switching careers into data science or data becoming a data analyst? No, not by any means. But I do see AI being something that is going to continue to impact our daily lives, our careers. And I want to understand exactly how it works. How does machine learning work? How does artificial intelligence work? This is something I'm, as a builder at heart, as a coder at heart, I always want to understand how things actually work. So that's kind of the background as to why I decided to take this course. And I love learning in a group setting. So that's another reason why I did it instead of doing online, which I've done for about the past year on my own time. Speaking of online courses, I'm going to share with you some of the top machine learning courses that you can take online if you're interested in exploring more of this. But I thought this was a really great way to connect with you and for anyone who's either interested in machine learning, just wants to get some high level of it, or if you are studying it, we can do it together. Speaking of AI and machine learning though, something you need a portfolio when you are going to be putting all your learnings in one spot, a portfolio or even an aspect to your portfolio or website, a blog where you can share about this. Now I'm not saying you have to become, you know, an influencer or share your daily life on this website or portfolio, but I do think having a place to put your learnings and projects you're building will help you stand out. So what I've been using to build my portfolio, my updated one is a tool called TenWeb. Now I'll pull it up on screen here. So TenWeb has an AI website build which allows you to go through a website creation flow. All right, so you can see here, I am on 10Web's website and we are going to generate a website. So this is really cool. I love there are two options, one being convert a website to WordPress with AI. For this example though, let's create a website with AI and this will generate tailored content and images. All right, so create an informational website or an online store. This is super cool for anyone looking to sell anything, like I said earlier, but let's go informational business type. Let's start with, mm, let's do tech company. We're all about the tech, you know? And this also would work for a portfolio if you are in tech as well. All right, this is super helpful to me because I am someone who does not have an eye for design at all. I actually really like this one. I think this is a really great way. Mm, actually, this might be the best. No, this one, let's go with this one for the portfolio. And let's do forest, I love that green. Next, company name, let's do Tiffany Tech. Next, now service feature. Now, see, this is really cool. So obviously we want a blog, uh, latest advancements, latest tech advancements, innovative, you know, we gotta, really lean into the tech. All right, we are in the generating our personalized AI website. This is super exciting. I always get excited to see how AI interprets what I'm looking to, to build. All right, here is the website. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, so it blows my mind that this is generated in a matter of seconds. So you can see here it is responsive. So let's go into mobile and there you are, voila, it's beautiful. Okay, but I wanna show you something really cool. This, yes, it generated an incredible site for us, but there is so much more that we can do with it. So one thing I just want to scroll down though, because you can see here, you can even subscribe to a newsletter, which is incredible. Okay, but I wanted to share with you all the different tooling and customization you can add to it. Let's go ahead and do so for say a video. And then from there, what you can do is link it to say a YouTube video, uh, do autoplay, mute. I mean, the options are endless. This is just so cool. And then also to I really love the 10 web premium widgets. So things such as the pricing table, price list. This is more so when you get into wanting to freelance or create a business website, this comes in handy major. I linked 10 web down below. So make sure to go check it out. I gave the example of using it for a portfolio, but this is great if you are looking to start a business, uh, maybe you want to do some freelancing and have some online services. 
this is where to go. All right, let's get back into what did I learn my first two weeks in machine learning and why should you care? Well, one, as I mentioned, having this understanding even through this video will really help you as to, even if you're not a technical person, just understanding some common terms that are used within machine learning. So the first thing we did day one of the course is we installed something called Anaconda and I'll bring it up on screen here. Now, when I was installing Anaconda, one thing it reminded me of is NPM. So it's kind of like, and maybe that's a wrong, wrong example, but that's what it really reminded me of. It was almost like a package manager. So you can see all the different kind of packages and libraries and things you want to install. Now on day one, one of the things that we went ahead and installed was Jupyter Notebook. And this is something that we are using pretty much on a daily basis or every single class. And this is, uh, I mean, how they describe it is a web-based interactive computing notebook environment. So essentially you can edit and run uh, docs that are more user friendly. It feels, they say human readable because we like to interact with computers as humans. That doesn't make sense, but you get what I mean. Anyways, it's a really great application and you also can access Anaconda through your terminal once you have it installed by just prompting with Conda. So it's very user friendly. Okay, and another thing we learned, which I think is so key and important for you to understand is the difference between supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement learning. Now these, I found this really interesting because I like to equate things to real world examples and the way that the data is trained through these different types of learning, you can really do that, you can relate it back to real world examples. So let's go through some of this because this is key to know. Supervised learning. Supervised learning was the easiest one for me to wrap my head around. And that essentially is you are already uh, labeling the data as you are teaching a machine about it. So when the data is coming in, it say it's Apple the data that is Apple is already labeled as so. So the machine, once it gets it, it already knows what an Apple is. So an example of this is when we were kids and we were studying uh, through textbooks, you know, the questions are in the front of the textbook and then at the back would be the answers. That's kind of how you can think of supervised learning. Then we have unsupervised learning, which really involves working with data that has not been labeled yet. So why would you do this? This is something that took me a bit to understand and it's really in the case that you just weren't able to label the data ahead of time. So an example would be customer segmentation. So say you are tracking different areas about your customers, uh, say their demographic, their habits, their spending, all of that kind of thing but you weren't labeling this data. So what you can do with unsupervised learning is through different uh, techniques such as clustering, the company can then group these customers into segments based on similarities. Then we have reinforcement learning. This one honestly is something that's still hard for me to wrap my head around as far as what is the difference between like why you would use reinforcement learning instead of supervised or unsupervised learning. Like I said, I'm still learning and I'm just sharing with you my learnings and I wanna be always real and candid with you about that. So for reinforcement learning, how I look at it as, I mean, I have to always equate things to dogs. I mean, because they're the best. When you are giving, when you are training a new dog or a dog for a new trick, there is kind of reinforcement learning that they do. So it's either if they do the trick right, they get a treat. If they do it wrong, they have to try again. And that's essentially what reinforcement learning is, literally, where it's the machine is getting fed data. And then if it's able to identify different data, yes, it gets rewarded. This is correct. And if not, try again. So an example that reinforcement is actually used is with self-driving cars. So the car system could receive rewards for desirable actions, such as maintaining a safe distance from other vehicles, staying in the correct lane, et cetera. And then penalties, if it does not do the correct action. I mean, that could be big penalties, but you get the point. And then over time, it will get smarter and smarter. Honestly though, one of the biggest takeaways, even just from two weeks of this course, we're really going to start diving more into data structures and algorithms in week three. But what I've learned thus far is I used to think of people who studied AI or machine learning as these geniuses, kind of similar to what I used to think when I was first getting into coding and software development. I thought there's no way I could ever study that or there's no way I could ever get a job doing that, et cetera, et cetera. When in reality, when you dive into it, I've noticed I've had a lot of the same feelings I did when I first started to code as I do now that I'm getting into machine learning where it's feels overwhelming and you feel kind of silly or dumb, honestly, at times, but then you realize that that's part of the learning process and everyone has been here having those feelings and you just keep on going and learning. That is the key to it. That is the key to success with anything you are learning. And I wanted to share that because I think I, I I'm hoping that I'm not alone in these feelings, or maybe I hope I am alone so then you don't feel this way. But at the end of the day, it's normal to have these feelings of imposter syndrome, but just keep on going and know it's not unique to you. Others feel this way too. 
With that though, let's dive into some courses if you want to have more of a self-paced learning when it comes to these topics. And once again, it doesn't mean that you necessarily want to switch your career, but it's more so you're very interested in this and you want to be educated to continue to grow in your career or skill set. Let's start with some free resources because we love free resources. So one is machine learning crash course, and this is for Google developers or by Google developers. So this is a quick intro to machine learning, and it really is pretty high level touching on concepts and then also to TensorFlow examples. So it does get a bit more into the weeds, but this I would say is a good course if you are a technical person, but wanting to touch uh, machine learning just on a higher level. Okay, and then Kaggle has some great courses or micro courses they're called. And I mean, they are known for its competitions. They offer micro courses on specific machine learning topics. So these include intro to machine learning and intermediate machine learning courses, which are very hands-on. Now, if you don't wanna do a hands-on course, there's a great one I would recommend by Coursera. I mean, Coursera honestly is just killing it right now with different machine learning and AI courses. And this one is machine learning uh, by Stanford University. I've shared with this one before, but it is so good. And I think it's a great one, whether you are technical or non-technical to dive into, but it's not free that one but it's really worth it. I took the AI version of this course, learning about artificial intelligence. I haven't taken the machine learning one yet. And that course anyways was done so well. It really laid a good foundation for me anyway. So I definitely check that out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm curious, do you want me to share more about what I'm learning in my machine learning class? What questions do you have around it? Leave in the comments. I always do my best to try and answer every single one of your comments. And also too, I linked down below 10 web so you can get building with AI, building your portfolio, building your business today. Oh, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Give it a like, give some love to me. See you all soon. Thanks everyone.